first of all, thank you, uh, Joan, for having me here. And I'm uh, so delighted to be here and uh, share with you um, my story uh, and sort of highlight the impact that the VCP had on my career uh, and where I'm at with things now and what we hope to do at UCSF uh, in San Francisco. So uh, again, I think you may find some similar themes um, as to what Gart spoke to earlier today, um, and just in terms of the experience and the process. But, uh, but again, I'm, I'm just so grateful to be here uh, and really, uh, again, look forward to sharing my thoughts with you uh, about the clerkship program. So I thought it'd be good to know a little bit about me uh, and kind of where I grew up uh, in South Texas. So uh, as Jen mentioned, I'm a second generation Latino. Um, the first generation of my family to go to college um, and also the first physician uh, in my entire family, uh, my extended family. So uh, as you can imagine, um, it's been somewhat of an interesting path, sometimes a lonely path, trying to figure this out and trying to navigate um, all the different things that uh, are necessary to navigate to become a physician. Um, my parents were migrant farm workers. Uh, they sort of grew up uh, in South Texas, but would spend summers uh, going up north uh, to the fields. And you know, from the first memory I can remember, uh, the issue around education uh, and trying to do better was um, just something that was instilled from day one. I have three siblings, and my mom was really hoping she'd have a physician in the family, so she had a fourth one, uh, just in case it didn't work out. And uh, fortunately, um, uh, it did work out. Um, my siblings, I'm the only one in medicine. I have a sister in pharmacy. Uh, but, uh, but her plan worked, because she uh, has the doctor that she's always wanted, uh, or the doctor in the family, um, that, uh, that I think has really made her very proud. But, uh, but again, the, the issue around um, education and really trying to, to go beyond what her and my father had was one that... Uh, was emphasized over and over and over again. So I grew up in San Benito, Texas, and for folks who are familiar with the state of Texas, uh, they'll realize it's a very, 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 very bottom uh, of the tip of the state. So if you look at a map, we're all the way down, about 20 minutes from the Matamoros-Brownsville border. Um, and so this area, the Brownsville-Harlingen, Texas area, um, is one um, that um, is unfortunately um, one where there's a lot of poverty uh, and a lot of health disparities that exist. And in fact, in 2012, uh, this Brownsville-Harlingen area, again, San Benito sort of part of that, uh, was named the most uh, sort of poorest area in the country. Uh, the median average income of that part of the country uh, is about $31,000 a year. And nearly two out of five residents that live in this area uh, live in poverty. Um, the um, Brownsville is also one of the largest Latino populations in America. Uh, and unfortunately, though, we also see the highest rate of poverty among Latinos that live in such a large metropolitan area. So I went to high school in San Benito at a public school, San Benito High School. And my freshman year, there were 600 students that started off in the class, one of the largest classes of freshman students uh, that year back in 1984. And by the time we got to our senior year, there were only 290 of us that graduated. And by the time we sort of decided on plans, only 28 of us went to college. Uh, but interestingly, though, of the 28 of us, three of us are doctors and two of us are in academia. So, uh, so I think somebody did something right in terms of mentorship. But, um, but again, just to give you a sense of, of, of what I was up against in terms of the challenges and, and, and the issues around um, mentorship and experience and exposure when I was uh, young growing up in South Texas. Uh, I went to undergrad at UT Austin and I uh, was a clinical pharmacist, a BS in pharmacy, um, thinking that this would be a good background to have um, when I had to get into med school, was pre-med the entire way, and spent two years taking a break between pharmacy school and med school to uh, you know, kind of relax a little bit, make some money, and kind of gather myself before I went back to med school. Um, after my first year as a clinical pharmacist, I applied to medical school in San Antonio. Uh, and actually. The way the Texas system works at the time is that uh, there was a UT application process for the four University of Texas schools. And so that includes Galveston, Houston, uh, Southwestern uh, in Dallas, uh, and UT San Antonio. UT Austin's opening up a medical school next year, so we're very excited about having that fifth school uh, in a state that has a lot of students. But I want to share with you an experience that happened to me, though, um, as I was trying to figure out this process. And the UT system at the time had this set up where if you got an interview for a med school and you took it, you go in, interview, uh, and I had my first offer interviewed at one of the four schools and um, was offered admission. But unbeknownst to me, though, I didn't realize that if I took other interviews as sort of part of the process that I lost my spot um, in the original class. And so San Antonio calls me up. I get an invite. I'm excited. I go down to San Antonio. had a great time. Loved it. Thought about it. But then I decided that UT Houston was where I wanted to go, which was the original school uh, that I had uh, originally matched. And so um, 
here I'm thinking I've got a spot in Houston, I'm ready to go. I mean, things are going to work out. I turned in my resignation uh, as a farm assistant in May of that year. And I started wondering, because I hadn't gotten anything about uh, sort of the new student orientation, the admission process, kind of what was going on, getting ready to get all my social events set up, and uh, nothing happened. So towards the end of May, early June, I called the Dean of Admissions to see what was going on. And it turns out that by accepting the interview at the other school, I had automatically lost a spot. And I had no spot, basically. So here I am in early June. Uh, I resigned, had no more job, uh, and I didn't have a place at medical school. So I called up the Dean of Admissions, explained the situation to him, and he graciously offered to put me back on the wait list. But this is where it gets interesting. He sort of paused for a moment and said, I really, really want you to think about this, though, because my concern is that your inability to follow these instructions perhaps says that you may not have what it takes to succeed in medicine. I thanked him, hung up the phone, and I immediately called San Antonio, uh, got on that wait list, and within a week, I was back on in San Antonio. And I raise that point because you know, these messages that we get so early in life about our abilities, our inabilities, taking a chance, things like that can have such a profound impact. So this is how I started medical school, kind of already wondering if I had what it took to succeed. So I go to med school in San Antonio, had a fantastic time, some amazing mentors, and fast forward to the fourth year of medical school in September of 98. Walking down the hall to the dean's office, and just like Garth, I kind of saw that announcement on the wall for the Harvard VCP program. I thought, huh. Four weeks in Boston, they're going to pay for my airfare, place to stay. It's going to work out. It's not too bad. I mean, well, it's, I mean you know, here I'm from South Texas. I mean, honestly, Austin had kind of been the furthest north I'd ever been. So I thought, all right, let's do this and see what happens. Unfortunately, I had about 10 days to get everything in. Uh, and somehow was able to pull it all together. Application got sent off. Uh, and three weeks later, I was on my way, uh, flying out to Boston and landed at Logan with two big suitcases uh, and took the taxi over to Vanderbilt Hall. Uh, and so I spent four weeks at Vanderbilt and thought, wow, here we go. I'm at Harvard. This, this is it. That I've arrived. Um, so as this was going on, uh, eras had opened up. So for folks who are familiar, that's the electronic residency application system. Uh, and so I had um, you know, started applying to programs, but you know, again, not really sure what my abilities were. And San Antonio is a fantastic medical school, but it's not sort of up in the level of the giants like Harvard, Hopkins, Penn, UCSF. And so in my mind, I had this idea that there was this world above me that I didn't sort of belong in. Um, but I thought, well, let me come out to Boston, see how it goes at Harvard, and we'll go from there. Started my rotation at the West Roxbury VA, uh, and I didn't realize how far it was. It uh, was two bus rides from Vanderbilt Hall. Uh, the T didn't go out there, so I actually had to get up at 5.30, uh, hop on a bus, transfer to another bus. Uh, but uh, it was uh, the first time I'd actually used mass transit like that, um, because certainly growing up, we didn't have a, a setup like that. So I spent uh, four weeks doing this every day, uh, going to the West Roxbury VA for my sub-internship in internal medicine. And it was about the second week that I started thinking about things. And I thought, you know, Harvard students are smart. Right? They really are super smart. But I realized that I actually have what it took to do just as well as these students. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I, I sort of looked at my plan. I had already started applying to programs. Uh, and everything was pretty much in Texas or the surrounding states, kind of keeping myself limited to what I thought I could do, basically. Um, but it was after the second week that I realized that, you know, th this is different. Maybe I can actually do this. You know, what the hell? Let me just try this. I'm going to apply. So one night, I remember it vividly. It was a Tuesday night. I went back to the Harvard Library, hopped online, started clicking programs. And UCSF was one of those programs, uh, as were the Harvard Teaching Hospitals, uh, Stanford, Hopkins. I mean, I basically, it completely changed what I thought I could do. Just being here for those two and a half weeks, being with the students who were fantastic. But I realized that I was just as good as them and that I had what it took. Or at least I thought so. so applied all these extra programs, and it was really the encouragement of three interns that I worked with during that month, a couple of folks from the BI and a couple of from uh, um, the Brigham. Um, and they were really, you know, what, Renee, you should really rethink this. Just apply to these programs and see what happens. So I did. Um, I got interviews at every single school I applied to. And a month later, uh, I was on my way to San Francisco for an interview in the categorical at the UC primary care program. So point number two is had I not taken the chance to come out here and spend those four weeks here, had I not had the chance to see what it was like and put myself in an experience like being here amongst folks that are brilliant, uh, it would have completely left me in a very different direction. And so, again, it's pretty powerful because if it really weren't for that experience, I wouldn't be standing here today speaking with you. 
interviewed at UCSF, fell in love with the program, fell in love with the Boston programs. I had connections in the Bay Area, uh, friends that were living there, and so I made the decision to rank them first, matched in the categorical program, um, and started residency in 1999. Finished residency in 2002, and did a health disparities fellowship looking at Latino health issues, focusing around colon cancer prevention. Um, and it was during those three years that I picked up and met some amazing mentors and folks who took a chance, if you will, on me and said, you know what, we're gonna help you figure this out. Had no, again, sort of no idea what research was about or what scholarly work included. In my mind, I had this idea that it was one thing when it really was so many, many other things. And so, uh, towards the end of my uh, residency, this fellowship opportunity came up uh, from my chief, uh, Eliseo Perez Estable, who's just fantastic and has really been the most responsible person for helping me kind of get to where I'm at. And so I applied for a health disparities fellowship, spent the year doing work focusing on colon cancer um, interventions to sort of address colon cancer screening in Latinos. Um, and I basically joined the faculty in 2003. Uh, and I've been on the faculty now since then. Um, and when I first joined the faculty, I was asked to chair the Department of Medicine's Residency Diversity Committee. You know, an issue with us within the program that we really had an issue bringing folks from diverse groups into the program, uh, let alone keeping them and sort of encouraging them to stay in academia. So I came on board. Um, and within the first couple of years, we were able to increase our diversity from about 9% across sort of all of our medicine programs to almost 20% within a couple of years. And that was by taking experiences that I had, collecting experiences from my trainees, uh, and bringing those ideas together uh, to address some of the issues around recruitment. In 2007, I was asked to join the Office of Graduate Medical Education and became the Director of Diversity for GME. Um, and it was at that time that I paused, and I thought, you know what, I want to start something similar to the VCP program at UCSF. And so fortunately though, the support wasn't there. There was some interest, but everybody was like, what are the numbers, do these programs work? What are the numbers? Show me the data. You know, how many students match? And you know, if we're gonna invest in this, you know, we really wanna know that these programs are gonna work. This was all in the setting of the year that California was broke and we had to go on furloughs. Uh, and so as you can imagine, everybody cut the programs and so my budget was slashed completely uh, and nobody wanted to support this except medicine. So we launched the program in medicine only the first year. We had uh, a student come in and match, Anna Malkina, um, who came through the program as a, VC, a VESP, or Visiting Elective Scholarship Program student, uh, matched with us a year later, completed a nephrology fellowship, and is now on faculty at Loma Linda University. So she was our first success story. And since then, we've had another couple of students that have come through. Uh, more recently, Sarah Schaefer, who's a student who is Latina from El Paso, Texas, um, went to med school at NYU, heard about the Visiting Electoral Scholarship Program, uh, and came out to UCSF, rotated, matched, is now a chief, and is now going to join the faculty in hospital medicine next year. Um, and so again, sort of another success story in the sense that this experience brought her out here, and it may not have been a possibility had she not had the chance to do this. And, you know, again, I, I, as I think about how this all happened, it was because of what I had been through and the opportunities that were given to me. A couple of years after that, other departments slowly came on board, again, with no central administration to support this. Um, OBGYN, uh, emergency medicine, uh, and anesthesia all jumped on board. And, you know, gradually the program's been picking up speed. And in fact, this year, we, within, um, emergency medicine, they had three students come out to, on the scholarship program support, and one of them just matched at UCSF emergency medicine. We had a student come through on a psychiatry rotation as well, supported by the best, but she just matched as well. Um, and fortunately, the administration has now recognized the potential and is now understanding that this really takes some time and a commitment. And so the School of Medicine uh, has just announced that they are now going to support 10 scholarships that will allow me to open this up to any program um, of any student's choice. And so it's small, but it's a start. And so I'm thrilled that we'll be launching the program at a larger scale. Again, 10 scholarships, but I'll take what I can get. And so it's, uh, you know, the, the, the stipends are somewhat modest, especially considering how expensive it is to be in the Bay Area. Uh, average cost of one bedroom is a crazy amount that I won't get into. But, but again, I think it's, it's, it's exciting that folks really value the experiences. And I think we're starting to understand that you, know, you, you can't rely on these numbers. You need to make a commitment. You need to sort of give this a time uh, that it needs to sort of nurture and to, to develop um, and to evolve. And so we're thrilled about uh, the possibilities uh, that this potential uh, new scholarship program will offer for students. And my hope is that uh, in 25 years we'll be celebrating something similar uh, and that we'll have a chance to bring folks back together. And I'm, I'm just sort of struck by what an amazing job this program, the VCP, has done to track us. I mean, tw I mean it was 18 years ago that I was here and they still know where I'm at and they had to find me. <laughs> so it's just really, it, it, it's just, it's fantastic. Um, 
and there's so much to learn, but, uh, but again, I, I'm, I'm grateful to have connections to have met people here who have been instrumental. Um, and uh, I'll be emailing Joan quite a bit to get advice um, on the program and as how we, um, uh, as, as we develops, as it develops and as it evolves. Um, so where am I now in terms of my career? So my packet just went in for professor uh, this past summer. Uh, and I hope, uh, I just saw that it went through CAP, so it's somewhere floating around there, and I'm hoping that by July 1st, I'll be full professor at UCSF. So that's, um, um, but again, none of this would have been possible. You know, had it not been for that day in September when I walked down that hallway, literally stumbled upon this opportunity. Um, it fell in my lap and I saw this, I'm like, I've got to try this. And it completely changed me. Uh, and it completely changed the direction of my career. So for that, Joan, thank you. Uh, and thank you to the VCP because it has just made a tremendous impact in my life and my career. And I'm looking forward to doing this with other students in California. So. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>